I'm Dr. Greg Winteregg, CEO of the Private Dentist Alliance. I want to talk to all of you students out there today who are wondering what your future is going to be like as a career in dentistry, as an assistant, as a hygienist, as a dentist, where is this profession going with the rapid increase of the DSO movement? I'm here to tell you the PDA is going to help you and I want you to become a member today. It is free. Now, why should you become a member? You're going to get weekly video updates from me and you're going to get regular updates of our newsletters from the Alliance on exactly what is happening and how we are going to help preserve and protect the private practice of dentistry. Now to me, the most important advantage is you are going to get access to our job board. What is that? Our private practicing members all have access to our PDA job board, which means if they have an opening in their private practice of assistant, hygienist, doctor, front office staff, they're going to be able to post it. And you're going to be able to check up regularly. And as our membership grows, we're going to be covering larger and larger territories across the United States. If you are looking for a job in any position in the office of a private practice, you need to become a student member today. It is free. Go to www.privatedental.org and become a student member today. You're going to love your benefits. Do it now. What is up, guys? It's your boy, Matt Havis, back at it with the Dental Student Advisor Podcast. And today we have an awesome interview for you. We have Bahar Jalalian. She is a D3 at the Dental College of Georgia. She is truly a wonderful student. She cares so much about her patients. And we thought we'd give you an insight on the future of dentistry and the next generation and the ones phasing in coming out of dental school. So we sit down with her today. We discuss social media and how to have a good active presence on there while you're trying to build your network and everything and how you can do that well and successfully so that way you can have that good network to help you get jobs or to give you more information, whatever you need to help you become the best dentist you could possibly be. So we had an awesome chat with her. Uh, stay tuned for part two, which is going to come out soon. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. Give us a like, comment, review. Make sure you share it to a friend. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what we could do better for you. And, uh, you know, it's crazy out there, so stay safe and vibe on. And we're good. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Student Vibes podcast. I'm Seth Kalish. I'm here with Matthew Havis, Cole Herzik. And today we have our very, very special guest, Bahar. Bahar, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Great to see you. So Bahar has got to be one of the most influential people on social media. She's got an amazing Instagram. First of all, Bahar, how do you say your last name? Oh, but I want to hear you inter like say it first. I, I don't even know how to begin. <laughs> I was going to say, I, was, I wanted to go Hispanic, but you're not Hispanic. So I was going to go yeah. Hallelian, but I know that's probably wrong. No, no, no. Not Hispanic, not Latina, but I wish. Yeah. So how do you say it? Uh, Jalalian. 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 Yeah. That's like the Americanized version if it was Hispanic. Exactly. That's how we say <laughs> yeah. It. yeah. So I joke all the time that I'm like, they couldn't have put more Allah in my name if that gives you yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. exactly. So Bahar, you have got a great following and you are very adamant about posting on social media. So what kind of inspired you to go down that route? Like you, you're posting all the time and it's great. Like you, you do a lot of outreach, a lot of advocacy for the dental profession and dental students. Oh, wow, you're the ultimate hype man. Uh, I don't think I do that much. There's definitely people out there better than me. But um, one thing that I think got me going is that I didn't have any social media before dental school. Um, no Facebook, no Instagram, nothing. I like barely had a cell phone. I got a cell phone like right before starting dental school. Oh, I was the girl people were emailing to get in touch with. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was a literature major, total like old school books and everything. And um, when I started dental school, someone had told me that if you want to do well here, you need to like network, you need to make friends, you need to, you know, 
go on the Facebook page for your dialing class. So my first social media was just joining my um, Facebook group for my new dental class. Um, and then I guess, I guess it's cause it's addictive or something, but something got me for like moving with it. And it was just really, really, I don't know. It just made me feel good to be able to connect with other people in dentistry. And it did, I feel like it helped me so much to have people who've been through it before. But on that note, like even the guy who ran the de Facebook page, he asked one of my roommates, is this a real girl? Like I thought this was a robot. And then <laughs> girl, she's, she wants to join our Facebook page. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. No, and it's great. Just like Seth said, I mean, your social media presence is clearly made apparent to everyone. I mean, students of dentistry, dentists of Insta, women in healthcare and all these things. And that's been phenomenal. And I think especially for you as well, I mean, I'm sure being featured on women in healthcare, I'm sure that means a lot to you. Yeah, it's huge. I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm so appreciative when anybody features me like big or small. It just means it means the world to me that someone like I was able to touch someone in some way and have an impact on their lives. But um, definitely a huge thing for me is women empowerment and trying to help if I can. My, my biggest thing is like if I can inspire one little girl to be like, I want to be a dentist. That's just that would be the biggest win for me. So that's it's huge when when things like women in healthcare like feature me. It means a lot. That's awesome. A heart. We, we love to see it. So I'm going to take a quick moment and uh, just let everybody know about ASDA District 5. We're repping big time from District 5. Bahar, you're in District 5 as well. Yes. But also, November is Advocacy Month. So let's talk a little bit about advocacy. I'm going to drop this information and then I'm out. We actually have an advocacy meeting and you guys will discuss all about Bahar. So real quickly, uh, coming up in Advocacy Month, we're going to be having a molar bear coloring page. You can craft your own molar bear. And we're also going to have Instagram bingo. There's also an As the Action competition the uh, school, the chapter with the highest sign-up percentage wins national recognition to bring an advocacy speaker to campus or virtual event. We're also gonna have some webinar promotions. There's also an advocacy certificate program that is going to be run by a point system. So keep your eyes open for that. And then also we're going to be publishing the national advocacy report uh, update. Let everybody know what's going on in national ASDA and also within our district. So guys, love, love, love you guys, our audience, our listeners, peace out. You guys take it away. Bingo. Bahar, <laughs> great talking to you. We'll talk soon. All right. So Bahar, you are now a D3. You're in clinic. How's it going so far? Um, I, I'm loving it so, so, so much. It's um, not without its stress, but I was, I was the dental student that was sitting in class and doubting everything. I don't know if, you know, if anybody can relate, um, but I, I would just like, for me, it wasn't really clicking in the classroom. And now being with patients, finally, it just feels like I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. So um, I'm really, really grateful that our school has opened up its clinic and is giving us the opportunity to work with patients. Um, it's, it's definitely much more limited because of our current situation. So it's not the D3 that I was expecting. Um, right. I kind of posted about that. There's, but it's understandable with the situation we are now, but I'm happy. I'm so, so happy to be a D3. So everyone who's in D, D1, D2, keep going. <laughs> I think it gets better. Yes, there's I can, light. I can relate. Right. I'm a D2 yeah. myself and I look at these guys and I say, you know, I can't imagine the struggle and the hustle to get to the point that they're at now. And I see, you know, they're still in the clinic, just like you are, and they're killing it. And they're actually, you know, moving themselves forward. They're not, they're, you know, taking the punches as they come, but still moving forward and still learning. Lots of punches. Lots, Lots of punches. punches. <laughs> <laughs> a couple uppercuts. Yeah. Yeah. They catch you with a haymaker every so often. I, um, I can relate to you though. I really like that you, you sound like a you had doubts and it didn't click initially like in the classroom i yeah. felt the same way because i could speak to patients and everything i feel comfortable in the clinic you know mm -hmm. i walk in i'm like i'm home 
when I was in the classroom, I'd walk in like, God, I can't wait for this hour to be over. Or I can't wait for this <laughs> exam to be done with, you know? I felt the same way. Even in, in sim lab too, like you're cutting plastic teeth, but it's completely different than a natural tooth. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I don't know what it is. You'd think that it's harder on a real person. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, you know, this is a challenging um, field that we're in, but for some reason, when I'm in clinic, I can, I can do a restoration, but not on a practical. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's so funny. They're, they're like, cut the bridge prep. And you're just like, Oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's tough. and then they're like, do, do some crowns. And you know, you're cutting the crowns. You're getting like 75 to 80s and then you do it on the patient and it looks beautiful. And you're like, did I do that? Did I just, yeah. Right. right. You know, I'm like, you're ready to post that to Instagram or something when you see it. I mean, so yeah. I, I can relate. I, I I see what you're talking about. So at least it, we're in the same, you know, we have people that feel the same way. Exactly. And um, I think that it, the same feeling has kind of come across with most of my classmates is that um, practical days are completely different from when you're in clinic and when you're, I don't know if it's the adrenaline or just the fact that you're taking care of a human being. Um, it all just feels so much better. Um, and I think if, if anything, if I would just like throw out the challenges with clinic, for me, I've not found them to be much so like so much the dentistry aspect of it. It's been like patient management or like business aspects, <laughs> um, you know, dealing with biz the business office and getting a patient to come in your chair and, um, those kinds of things are, are scheduling patients, which we have to do. And I don't know, I don't know about you guys, like some schools don't have to do that. Um, we, we manage a lot too. Like we have to check in with the patients that we're given and stuff. And we have to start scheduling them because if they don't, we have to. So. Okay. So, but they, do they schedule you guys? Like, do they um, schedule patients for you, give you patients? They do. They do. Okay. Lucky, lucky ducks. You guys do all, <laughs> you do all of your scheduling. Yeah. So we have, um, oh, we have chair release and it is the, the most stressful day of my life every time we have chair release. Um, and the chairs are available at 1215 on chair release day. And it's the hunger games. We all go on our, on Axiom and we try and get chairs, the chairs that we need for our patients. Oh, and wow. then we have to go and call our patients see if they're available on the day that we booked a chair. Oh no. Oh my God. Um, sometimes like, and, and people have different strategies. Some people call a patient before and they say, can you come in? And then they pray that they get that chair on that day. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work out and it leads to a lot of cancellations and a lot of right. um, inefficiency. Yeah. yeah. So it's that, that's why I feel like we're more than just here at the dental school. We're literally schedulers. We're our de own dental assistants. Sometimes we're we're everything. Um, you wear every hat. I mean, I, yeah. You know, you know, and, and we're blessed at our school. They do schedule for us. I have to admit. So I can't even imagine like what what you guys go through to trying to do that, like the chair release and all that stuff. I'm gonna excited yeah. just thinking about. It. I haven't even experienced it. Right. I'm so nervous every time we do it um and especially now another thing that's changed with our situation is that uh, because of covid there are fewer chairs available and with aerosol generating procedures like operative when we get an operative chair or a fixed chair we have to have an assistant or we cannot schedule a patient that day really oh wow i also have to find a classmate who's willing to help me that day okay well, that's nice though that you have a classmate that can help that's you. That's true. That is yeah. really nice. Um, yeah. because, I mean, you know, pre-COVID times, especially, you know, yeah. you're usually everyone's in clinic at the same time. So, mm -hmm. who is there really to help you unless somebody really didn't have anything going on? So, yeah. I mean, now it's kind of nice. You probably have a lot more people that are willing to help you because they're like, all right, well, I'm not really doing anything. So, sure, I give you a shot, which is great. It's so wonderful. It makes the world of a difference when you've got a teammate there with you. Right. You know. Especially somebody where if you're not exactly sure about something, they can kind of help you out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially, like, you, do you remember the parameters on this? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just yeah. Was this supposed to be a chamfer or a shoulder? I don't quite remember. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then they're like, I got you. And they're like Googling it over here. <laughs> <laughs> they're standing behind the patient. The patient has no idea. 
Okay. If only the patients knew. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you can appreciate this. Have you do patient management? You say it's the hardest part. Have you ever had like a difficult patient where they're just a pain in your ass, like from the get go? Like when, once they sit in the chair, like this would be a long appointment. Oh my goodness, yes. And I don't like to bash patients because if I have a patient, I'm blessed. So <laughs> yeah, right. I love them. I'm like, I'll do anything for you. But um, yeah. <laughs> well, no, not anything. But um. I did have someone who, and, and it's not the patient's fault. They, they live quite far mm -hmm. from the school, um, which is, is a really difficult thing to manage already, the fact that they, they live quite far. But it was just a situation, and I'm, I'm still treating this patient. Um, so it's one of my um, complete denture patients. And they live so far. And as you guys know, making dentures is a process. And then making dentures at a dental school yeah. is, another, uh, is another process. So having someone be so far away can be hard to manage because you need so many appointments. Um, and so I had the patient on the phone and I had not even having met the patient yet. It was just my first introductory call. Like, hi, my name's Bahar. I'm um, a third year dental student at the Dental College of Georgia. I'm just calling to say you're in my patient population. Can't wait to meet you. Wanted to know if you want to um, schedule an appointment with me. Yeah. Um, get a call back saying, um, yes, I want an appointment. I'm coming in from out of town on this day and I want my dentures. And okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I had to like have call back and have a conversation about there are so many steps to making a denture. We have to make impressions. We have to then make custom impressions. We have to, like, there's a long process. And so I apologize. Um, and I even understand if you do not want these to be made here at the school because it's such a long process. And um, the patient said that they already had impressions made before COVID. Right. And so you can make the dentures from those impressions. <laughs> so, right. so it's just, Yes. And it's just, um, it's interesting because I understand too, that a lot of people are just not educated about dentistry. Right. And so that's a big thing that, um, I think that we need to educate more people on the field and kind of explain the work that goes into everything that we do. Right. Like, I wish I could maybe 3d print a denture from an impression or from a, maybe from a, you know, from a scan or something. Right. Maybe the future it takes us there, but like right now, I'm a student in a dental school, and I need at least eleven appointments. You're, um, you're, you're sitting there mixing polysulfide, master cast. You're doing the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so, and and then like it, alginate. I don't even know when that impression was taken because we, right. you know, it was a transfer patient from a previous yeah. dental student. You know, so. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, there's one of those things, you know, thank goodness for the people that work in labs that do all this wonderful work for the private practitioners. Absolutely, That's amazing. You know, God bless you all. You're phenomenal. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, dental students, obviously we have to suffer, but however, I will touch on the fact that it's important to kind of know what goes into the process. And even if you're not going to do it on a day-to-day -day basis, at least understand it enough that if you had to do it, you could, um, because it's funny, we just had an interview yesterday um, with a doctor name is Dr. Uh, Chitra Durgam. And she is a big proponent of, you know, like she's like many hats, just like Matt said about being kind of like the ringleader in a sense where she knows everything that's happening and then she delegates, but she knows how to do everything. She's like, I know how to do all the books. I know how to do everything at the front desk. I know how to do every dental procedure, hopefully, right? Yeah. Um, I know how to do all the lab work. I know how to do basically everything that happens within my office. But then once I learned how to do everything, then I delegated. So that say that, you know, there's some kind of kink or chain in the system, I can come pick up the slack or if need be, I can do it someday. You know what I mean? So I think that's, that's a one nice aspect to think about. Like a good sharp facet, woman. very sharp, sharp. And then you talked also about, to speak of Dr. Durgham, she's also got this great, and you might be interested in this Bahar is that she is um, developing a system to where that's going to be compatible with Alexa. I don't know if you have an Alexa, um, but she, she just got a cell phone, right? She, she just got a cell phone, right? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take a break from them one step at a time. But however, if you name is Alexa, right. no, I'm just kidding. I know what you're talking about. Right. So she has an Alexa, right? And she's saying she's developing this program that patients can download into their Alexa 
and you can ask Alexa questions about dental work, about you know what your dentist gave you, like, hey, Alexa, uh, tell me what the post-operative instructions that I just got from Dr. Durgham's office, and you'll be able to play them. So rather than, you know, you have to just kind of like memorize everything the dentist told you or like go off of, you know, what they wrote down on a piece of paper for you to read, it will yeah. repeat the instructions on demand whenever you want them, whenever you need them. And then even more information, like can explain something a little bit better. That's something she's working on and she's working about getting it in motion next month. So that's amazing. I love that. I absolutely love that. I think like it's, it's interesting too, and I can't wait to begin working in like starting practicing because right now too I feel like my demographic is a certain age group mm -hmm. and so I'm accommodating my style of dentistry to a certain age group but I can't wait to like move into a practice and kind of see because all these modern things too if I start having like you know patients in their 20s to 40s and kind of who are interested in applications and I think that's 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 exciting for me too. So maybe I do need to get an Alexa so I can, <laughs> I can speak to young folks like you. Right. Now, so, so you talk about like with, um, you know, patient care and everything. Is there anything that draws you towards, you know, certain procedures or anything that you can help patients with? Some people, like, I hated dentures when we first started like making them in the sim lab. But yeah. after seeing like, uh, I'll use like, I had an old patient and to give them a new smile it was incredible like you see their face light up and it changes their confidence and their whole demeanor is there any procedures like that that made an impact that you just absolutely love now that you're in yeah, we, we had a team dentures course that we just completed so we um before we like went off on our own to make dentures for patients um last year actually in our sophomore year we had a team dentures course four of us per patient and so all four of us together um, were, making were making dentures for a patient. And we, because of the situation, we were unable, we were delayed in the delivery of our dentures mm -hmm. until about two weeks ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah, these four patients, and there's so many sob stories also because of COVID that I've heard from patients just waiting for crowns, dentures, everything. But so it was even more so rewarding for the patient that we just delivered two weeks ago, delivering those dentures to her because I barely passed dentures. <laughs> like I barely passed that course. We had a, um, our first practical was a practice practical and I got a negative 31. So <laughs> <laughs> if that inspires anybody, you can get a negative 31 and jump up from that. Um, but yeah, when we delivered those to our patient who I have a follow up with coming up, um, it just, it was just amazing. I actually set up the operatory for her and I, I was so afraid they were gonna yell at me because I always am breaking those PPE rules, but I wanted her to have a good time when we delivered the dentures on delivery date. So I decorated our operatory <laughs> for her. Like I just went to the dollar store, like put up like streamers and decorations yeah, and everything. Yeah. Oh, and know. yeah, she, she was just so happy. So, and we took a picture, like our group with her at the end. So that experience made me go, you know what, all this work, all the setting of the teeth and the struggle and getting video right. <laughs> Yeah, oh my God. all of that is worth it you know what about border molding do you have fun border molding like what like I'm, <laughs> as i'm doing it i'm like what but but i mean i see like i see the necessities of everything but but i also we had to adjust her denture so much at the end too because so much gets changed in the acrylic after it's sent to the lab well, so yeah 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 and still i'm making adjustments so we still have a follow-up and things like that so um i see like all, why now all the work and all of it is necessary because it's it's just like you want them to be completely comfortable and happy with it because they're the ones living with it not me exactly and it's so funny because the patient comes in and they're like i got a little spot here and all right take it down and then the next time they got no spot on the other side and it, it's like infinite, you know? And, but once you finally get it to like a sweet spot, the patient just is there. You're like, you know, like a God to them. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're a hero. And I just, it's such a great feeling. 
and you see their face they're like they're like oh how'd you do that good job like you got that you're impressing them it's like it's like when you change the tv like input for your oh, grandmother right, or your yeah. grandfather blown away they, yeah like, how'd you do that it's the same right. thing with the, with the dentures yeah it's exactly. the same thing yeah. little do they know you just needed that a little acrylic burr and rub it yeah, right once or twice over the <laughs> spot and they're good exactly. that's it that's the only <laughs> thing but now, Bahar, I need you to send me your practice address because if you're decorating rooms and stuff, I need you to be my dentist. Yes. Yes, please. I am happy to treat anybody that. It, I don't know. It just makes me feel good. It makes me feel good if I can like make someone feel special. Because because another group, another another thing too. I was a little bit. I wanted to make her happy because she was kind of jealous. Um, the week before a group across from us had delivered dentures and they were celebrating, they were so happy. And I was like, I got you next week, come in and I got you. So, right. Yeah, we are happy. That's so awesome. Now, Bahar, can you take us through, let's go back before dental school. Like what made you choose dentistry out of all things? Well, that question, it scares me so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It really does because I don't, I hate to say that like I felt like I could have done anything, but I had a lot of things that I was passionate about um, before dental school. So um, in undergrad, I went to Emory for undergrad and I initially was really interested in their journalism department um, mm -hmm. because they have great connections with CNN. And I was very, very, very like, fascinated with that. I grew up in Atlanta, CNN centers down there, being able to intern there. I thought, oh, that's so cool. Um, and I started there and the year I started, they actually shut down their journalism program. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that happened. Um, and I had a lot of like a, a lot of credits, AP credits from high school. So a lot of my classes were also fulfilled, a lot of my requirements. Um, so I just went my first year and I started just taking random classes. Like I just picked some random classes and um, one of the random classes was a 300 level comparative literature course. And first day I went in there, fell in love with that, fell in love with that class. Um, and I think like a week after, I mean, you don't even have to declare your major until like sophomore year. And a week after I declared my major in literature. So, <laughs> So I had literature and I'm, I'm like, mom, dad, I majored in literature. And I go home, I'm like, I, I have like a sticker from like my literature major and I'm Middle Eastern and they're thinking to themselves, what? Yeah. <laughs> my mom couldn't even pronounce literature. She was like, what? Oh man. What is literature? My daughter, no. So, <laughs> um, so, Needless to say, it didn't impress my parents. Right. Um, but in addition to the literature degree, I went and declared a degree in a major in biology. Um, so I got that as well. And uh, I also like worked while I'm an undergrad. We weren't the best well off like family. So I also worked. Um, I worked in a pharmacy. Okay. So I, okay. okay. I am going to like study literature. And then, you know, I'll take that somewhere one day without my parents knowing, I'll write a book. <laughs> but, um, but also I'm gonna try pharmacy. So I worked in a, um, in a pharmacy for six years um, and I was just a farm tech. And the craziest thing is that every pharmacist I worked with, and I love pharmacists and I respect them so much. And I worked with about like 10 different pharmacists during my career. But the ones that I worked with were like Bahar, no. They, they were like, you know, um, we know you and your personality and you like to be with people all the time and like interact with people and you're back here filling prescriptions. Um, and so I just like, they kind of told me like, you know, maybe you should try something else. And I, you know, I, for the longest time I um, was working in hospitals at the same time, like volunteering. I shadowed a little bit for dentists and doctors. Um, and I really, really did like dentistry, but it wasn't until I like went to Iran, where, which is where my family is from. And um, 
I told one of my cousins, this is such a long story. I'm so sorry, but I told one of my, <laughs> you keep going, please. We're I told one of my cousins, like, I can't really, you know, figure out if, if like being a physician is for me, or I'm really, really interested in, in dentistry. It seems fun to make people smile, make people happy. And my, my cousins in Iran were shocked that that was even like a thing over here. So Iran is actually one of the um, most underserved countries in terms of dentistry. And especially in rural areas, they, which is where my family is from, like in the villages and things like that, they don't even have practicing dentists. They just have like people kind of like tricks of the trade, kind of like hygienists who are performing dentistry for the people there when they need it. And that's really just like emergency care, like just extractions and things like that. Um, and the fact that like my cousin who is like even kind of well off someone, a kid who's grown up not too bad in Iran, didn't even know about like the necessity of brushing or flossing wow. as, a kid, as a kid. Like she doesn't even know that that's important. It scared me. So um, I would just, I would love to be able to like take this and practice here, but also volunteer my services over there throughout the year sometimes. So that's like my main goal too, is like to just be able to help out over there um, once I've settled myself um, as a dentist in the US. That's um, awesome. This would be great. No, you hear that all the time. I mean, the stereotypical thing is the doctors without borders going over to other places. But I mean, there's dentists that do all kinds of stuff. There's, um, I mean, there's another podcast. Uh, I can't remember the doctor's name, but it's the Passionate Dentist Podcast. And he does a lot of mission trips and he um, did a lot of cleft palate and cleft lip surgeries over in Africa and over in Europe and all kinds of places. And I think that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then we actually, um, you speak of Iran, we actually had the chance to speak with, you remember Dr. Alwan? So Dr. Tahrir Alwan is from Baghdad, Iraq. Um, and we got to interview him and then, you know, really neat. Um, and he's really interested in doing a lot of the same. He went to school in Georgia, the country, but he wants to come back to Baghdad to do more work there and to you know kind of use like he said the same thing there's not really a lot of dentists and there's a lot of need so he said he would really love to be able to bring that back exactly and you don't even know like i feel like just visiting and having like free clinic days like that in other countries you can i feel like you can leave a lot of impact Absolutely. even if you're not there throughout the duration of the child's life or the the community's lives you can leave a lot of impact just with your presence and your messages and your education. Um, I feel like, you know, that in and of itself, because this is such a preventative disease. It really is. You know, yeah. And reversible in a sense too, so. I mean, nothing that a drill can't fix, but yeah. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I know you guys want to make money and I'm like, um, but yes. <laughs> All right, guys, it's your boy Matt Hams back at it. And that'll do it for our, our part one episode with Bahar Jalalian, D3 from Dental College of Georgia. We had an awesome chat with her. We really enjoyed having her on. We hope you guys enjoy it. We hope you guys pick up a lot of information from her, whether it be from how dental students deal with COVID and trying to navigate with patient care through that or social media presence, whatever it may be. Uh, if there's anyone that you guys want to hear from or you guys want us to have on, shoot us a DM on Instagram. Let us know. We love to you know, provide the content that you guys want. Let us know. We'll find them or we'll find somebody that can provide quality information and uh, we'll make it happen. So as always, stay safe and bye-bye.